Hey everybody, welcome to More Fun Comics, where it's not just fun, it's more fun. We've already looked at a couple Marvel Silver Age comics, so for a little balance, let's look at a DC comic from about the same time. Metamorpho number 15 is a colorful adventure of a colorful DC hero, which no self-respecting speculator really cares too much about. But could it be an interesting addition to your more fun collection? I don't know. Let's take a look. Hey everybody, welcome to More Fun Comics, a webcast dedicated to promoting the joys, the secret mysteries, and the forbidden pleasures of comic book collecting. Just call me Darling Dirk Drudgler, lifelong comic fan, 20-year retailer, comic retailer, and comic collecting and hobby enthusiast and advocate. As you can see, we're about to take a look at a great and grade a copy of Metamorpho 15 from 1967. I chose this one for its commonness. There's nothing particularly special about it in terms of comic book history or financial desirability, uh, other than it's a little it's limited availability due to its age. There's an entire candy land of comics that don't have first appearances in them. Uh, that those kind of thing and those kind of things that can cause a blind spot. Um, for those who love comics for quick, cheap, or tawdry gain, which we do not advocate. So what's special about this issue? Other than it's a great historical slice of time, fun to read and collect, and that there are millions of them like it. So they're priced right? Really nothing. At More Fun Comics, Comic Shop, we take a look at comics with an eye on availability, collectability, and value. Grading comics is a process which involves a significant number of subjective decisions, the accumulation of which point to a final grade. Even though the standards are clear and consistent, variations in opinions do occasionally happen. We do have a standard 10-point grading scale. I'm sure you recognize it, 10 being gem mint, absolutely perfect. Zero being not even on the chart. More fun comics at this comic book shop. We're more interested in getting a great comic book and a great value. So we'd focus mostly on, we'll be focusing mostly on mid-grade books between four and seven. Assuming a bell curve, those are grades that are probably the most available in the wild. The sweet spot is where I believe you can still find gems at comic book shops, comic conventions, or online and still save a little cash. So this is Metamorpho 15, July 1967, published by DC Comics. It was written by Bob Haney, who actually was a pretty influential person in uh, comics. A uh, big, brave and bold writer. Uh, I don't know if he created it or not, but he also created the Doom Patrol, co-created, and uh, Teen Titans, both of which are TV shows now. So his contribution is notable. Um, in the history of the DC universe. The art was by Sal Trapani, but the original art in the st uh, earlier in the series and the comic creator was a woman named Ramon, Ramona Freyden. And uh, she, she did Aquaman. She was a very influential artist, but she had a very open style, a cartoony aspect, um, which fit more with her style of art. So uh, it's a great comic, and it's more in the style of Metamorph. If you've never read Metamorpho before, it's more in the style of kind of uh, like a Captain Marvel and uh, Plastic Man, that sort of thing in the original, sort of kind of goofy uh, standalone stories. But uh, it's a lot of really clever stuff in them. The, just kind of an overall ballpark grade for what we have here, just to kind of drop it in. It looks clean. The colors look really Really good. Um, the book is pretty sharp, just on eye appeal. So I'm, I'm, we're going to put it right at a six, and I, I'm guessing we're going to be able to uh, convince ourselves to go higher on it. So, but at least that gives us a starting point. It does, certainly certainly has no problem fitting in that spot. But if we look closer, we can see that the edges of the book are really sharp. Look good. Corner looks good. 
a little, little tiny bit of a kind of abrasion on that corner, uh, but nothing really to worry too much about. A couple of creased, little tiny spine creases, little tiny ones. So like right here. Um, so those all those are notable, but not too too bad. Don't hurt the book too much. Uh, good clean corner here, and then this edge, and then there's only the problem with the cover is there is a crease. So right across the uh, kind of breaks color, it does break color too. So it's it's just one crease, and it's not super noticeable, but it is there. So that that's kind of the only flaw in the cover. Other than that, the colors are really sharp. Everything looks great. The, uh, you can see that the uh, white spaces like Metamorpho's face are pretty good. So let's kind of take a look on the inside. We'll go through this one kind of quick. Uh, the first thing you notice, and it's more I'll notice it because I'm actually touching it, um, is the pulp paper is much more pulpy than some of the other comics in this. Um, so it's got kind of more of kind of a newsprint feel um, as some other comics are a little, little more uh, better quality paper pulp, I guess. And uh, so this one shows, but it also, because of that uh, newsprint sort of style, you see the kind of general browning, but it's not too bad. It's pretty, it's certainly well within the reason of a, of a six or a seven. Um, and it is consistent. It doesn't, it doesn't fade in or anything like that. So it's just kind of a, a general kind of fading of the paper. So it's still pretty good. Edges are great, clean, everything. Inside cover, putt pass and kick championship for those of you who remember. Um, Metamorpho is the elf element man, and he's fighting uh, this guy here. And he is a terrifying presence. And he's succeeded in getting rid of Element Man, so therefore the world is at his mercy at this point in time. So, uh, again, just kind of goofy, fun stuff, not really expecting to uh, get too much out of it literature-wise. So both Urania, the Element Girl, and the Element Man have been thrown into some kind of subatomic world that they can't escape from and it's interesting way the panels are laid out here in four four vertical pan or four horizontal panels um interesting again where ads are always great so the palisades amusement park that was a big thing in the dc comics a lot of people me included would have loved to have gone there uh just because the ads were so awesome Another great thing about these early, especially DC Comics, they were real good about it, was the ads for the other books. Um, it really did get you kind of excited about what was coming up and uh, keep you kind of up to date on what's going on. And the, the ads were, um, I mean, wouldn't you love to have that as a poster? As In fact, I, I, don't, I have no idea how long Bomba Jungle Boy lasted. <laughs> I may have to look that one up. But... <laughs> just, I mean, that would make, that's a great poster. So, in any case, those were always fun to see, and it helped a lot to get through the book. It was all part of the whole experience. And Metamorpho and Element Girl escape. So, Challenge of the Unknown ad. Um, they did an interesting uh, reader interactive thing. I guess this would be kind of interactivity before there was anything as such as interactivity where people could write in and say things that Metamorpho could turn into and they'd have their idea drawn out. And uh, so that'd be, that was quite a, quite a thing to get that done. Another fantastic ad specter, a uh, real good silver age character. I have some of that issue. We're definitely going to do one of those later, but uh, th it's interesting because the element, the uh, Metamorpho and most of the comics that were DC at this time kind of did worked in chapters. So they'd, always end with some kind of cliffhanger. You'd have three or four chapters in every comic. It's a lot of reading, too. So it's you didn't plow through these things. 
So here's an interesting section I thought that shows some of the humor in these uh, particular comics. The uh, So the guy is obviously the master of the universe. He's super powerful, so he makes his obligatory visit to uh, the United Nations. Just wherever, you know, it's, here he comes. Uh, let me add him. No, his power, beware it. Uh, so he's having his great time, and he makes his announcement that he's taking over the world, but he's a little shirt guy, so he's, like, buried behind the microphones. So, But everybody's cowering, of course, to him, and as you can see, they're all watching with rapt attention. The delegates are terrified. Fellow delegates, my nation cannot condone surrender. I object. My country votes for a compromise solution. So they're having a big argument, and and uh, Thunderbolt is just kind of wandering away there in the background, and like he's looking for the bathroom or something. Okay, so and then we end our chapter with a cliffhanger. Element Man comes back. But here's a couple of thing, interesting things. A comic called Maniacs, which I'm definitely going to have to look for, which has the it's Woody Allen in a comic book. So Woody, Woody Allen and the Mad Maniacs are swaying it together. So eh, another one of those ones that you see it somewhere laying around. It's in decent shape. It's a decent price. What the hell? Why not? And then the book progresses pretty much like you might imagine it would uh, with Metamorpho winning. Uh, the direct currents were that was always fun to, to read. They did give you little bits of news and also talked about the other comics that were coming out. So uh, that that was a must read when you're looking into things. And then there's this awesome, awesome ad. Actually, two awesome ads. So I this one I have to pay a little extra attention to. So I, I mean, you know, I will leave it pretty much unsaid. But this is 1967, and. Uh, It's great. Also, the awesomeness of the DC lineup on TV and the Batman and Robin TV show, which is great. It also has a great back cover uh, of an Aurora model Tarzan. So, uh, but uh, the pages are clean. Everything's great. I mean, what would you give this book? I am... I would. I'm tempted to give it a 7.0. I'm started at 6.0, and it clearly fulfills all the expectations of a 6.0. So that's not a problem. So the question is, can we push it to 7.0? And the only thing keeping me from going to 7.0 is that crease in the front cover. Um, that it, it's too prominent. Uh, uh, 7.0 will allow a tiny crease, a you know, real kind of minimal. Um, but any time you have any kind of crease in the cover, it definitely puts it more in the six range. So, but that's really the only flaw with it. Other than that, the pages are clean. Everything's real sharp. It's in nice shape. There's no spine roll. So I, a little between a 6.5 is where I'd finally put it. So what would that uh, Overstreet value be? It, Overstreet grades it at a 6.0, it's 15 bucks, and an 8.0, it's $30. So that one puts ours, you know, about in the, in the $15, $16 range. Uh, 9.0 is $50. If we look on eBay, I found one, uh, you know, of these, you see these a lot less than a lot of other comics. A lot of times you see them sold in sets. But this one was fairly recently. It went for a winning bid of $15.50 with 4 bucks shipping. So about around 20 bucks for a copy. And then just kind of taking a look at again, we can only judge by the cover on this particular one. But there's some tiny spine creases. So it looks a lot like ours. It has a little tiny corner crease, but not nearly as big as ours. And so you're looking at maybe this one went with shipping for about 20 bucks. Also kind of a, there's a lot of books out there with these kind of second level characters that are just fun to read. You'd, you're going to see, you'll see because of the, the paper quality, the, a lot more of these that are a little more beat up than normal. So, but you know, if you can find one for 15 bucks, uh, that's in this quality, then it might be a great addition to your collection. So 
So thanks for joining us. Uh, next week, we're going to our next episode. We're going to be taking a look at uh, a, a com- another comic, neither Marvel nor DC, but uh, even li- maybe a little more interesting because this was the Popeye series that was done by a, a fantastic, unbelievably funny guy called Bud Sagendorf. And um, so it's we're really going to take a look at where these are. And if you can find these and find them in decent shapes, I think you'll be really surprised at how much fun they are. So we're going to do that. And also in a future episode afterwards, we're going to look at sets. Uh, So kind of how do you evaluate a set of comics? Um, And one of the ones I'm going to use is one that's uh, still a reasonable buy and actually has a lot of great history to it. And that's, of course, Crisis on the Anyways, thank you for watching and we'll catch up with you next time. Please subscribe and like. Uh, we're trying to build our audience and uh, hopefully it's, this is something that you'd be interested in uh, on an ongoing basis. So thank you for joining us and have a great comic day.